Hello and welcome, Cabbage here. Let's have a look at Monster Strike, and then uh, we'll do a look back at the uh, the Heisei era. And uh, which is to say, just a look back at the entire history of Monster Strike. Um, there are a few uh, JP YouTubers that uh, did kind of a similar video, so I thought I would make my own. And then um, the topics in this video uh, will be um, first my favorite quests, and then uh, my least favorite quests, and then finally my kind of like my top memories or my top uh, goals from my uh, years of play. And um, I did start this in the global version. Uh, I don't remember what year, maybe 2014 or 15 or something, uh, but it was right around when uh, Izanagi was uh, first released, uh, that impossible quest. Uh, very early, I guess. And uh, when I played early in the, uh, or throughout the entire time that I played the global version, I played with a main and a sub, although they were both kind of the uh, the main. And uh, yeah, I had lots of hatcher monsters, made lots of max lux, uh, very involved in the game. And then uh, moving to JP, just the uh, single account, um, I was free to play for a little bit um, until I beat the uh, sealed watchtower. Uh, free to play. And then at that point I was satisfied, so I moved to uh, pay to play. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's uh, look back at my uh, favorite quests first. And um, they will be mostly limited to Impossibles and Colossals. So let's see if I can uh, bring them up. I guess first we'll look in the library. And then uh, one of the ones that I enjoy playing even now is uh, Yamato Takeru. And uh, he's fun because he's tough even now. Um, if your luck is bad or if your positioning is bad, you can still lose, even with like the newest characters. And um, I remember he was super tough when I was first playing him, uh, but I eventually made the max luck of him uh, with... who was it? I c Maybe I forget who my max luck was. I think it was just some like generic bounce wood with no gravity barrier. Maybe like PCG3 or like Basilisk or something. And then I used a couple of uh, Hunter King, and that's how I made the max luck of him originally. And uh, that was very uh, that was very satisfying to accomplish. And then actually another one of my favorite quests is uh, Yamato Takeru Kai. And uh, that one you need uh, kind of more bounce characters and then uh, no warp. And so um, I can use one of my favorite characters, Marishten, in there. And then other characters like the new uh, Grimm siblings and uh, Belphegor and people like that. And uh, there is pinching in there, kind of similar to the original Yamato Takeru. Uh, but once you get down to just you and the boss, uh, then you can't pinch against him. So you need to do like, you know, real shallow angles and uh, hit that weak point. And uh, yeah, I do enjoy that quest. It does take like over like 10 or 12 minutes to get through each time. Uh, but I still enjoy playing it. Um, otherwise, there's the, uh, the Tower of Champions. And then my favorite floors there are 30, 35, and 40. And then um, for those, you can use um, characters with no damage wall and no gravity barrier. Uh, there are not a lot of quests that require those two elements, so it's fun to use uh, the characters in there. And let's see who I got. Um, so yeah, you can use uh, Mikhail, Arthur, uh, Oreo, uh, Uriel, people like that. And uh, yeah, those are fun quests, I would say. Um, also fun, let's see if they are in the uh, the schedule. Oh, but Akasha here, I like him. Um, the uh, the War God series, uh, those impossible quests are not very popular among players. Uh, they're a little bit... Um, you can't just blaze through them, you need to sort of think a little bit. And then uh, kind of the, uh, the amount of time it takes per clear. Uh, it does take maybe more time than your average impossible. Uh, but I do like them. I like Akasha. Uh, there is a system in there where you have to take down guys in certain orders, but it's not too uh, heinous. Uh, just take down the... Uh, it's like a wolf or some kind of anthropomorph, anthropomorphic character. And then you take down the, uh, the golems or the... Um, shoot, can't remember anybody's name. I think it's the golems. You take them down next and then you go after the boss. And uh, that's fun. Um, also, from the War God series, I like to play uh, Nirvana. Oh, that's convenient, right underneath. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he also takes a little bit of time, uh, but um, it's fun. You take down the guys again in a certain order, and then you reveal the weak point of the boss, 
and then you can do big damage on the boss. Uh, you can do pinching in there and stuff, so it's fun. Let's see, other fun quests. Uh, most recently, maybe the newest quest that I really like is Apocalypse. Uh, this is another one where you use a bounce monsters, but you don't necessarily uh, pinch. Uh, you have to kind of position your guys within the certain areas um, so that your uh, bump combos can do more damage. And then like certain guys are like immune to any kind of damage except for that uh, bump combo damage from within the area. So uh, it's fun. And then um, as a max look, I can use... Um, what is it? Elizabeth and Hawk, and then any quest where I can use them. Uh, that's pretty fun. I also really like... Uh, I wonder if it's up now... Uh, yes, Devadatta here. Um, he's another one where you can use uh, bounce monsters. Uh, you want to have a null gravity barrier or null damage wall. Um, it's ideal to have both, of course, uh, but you can bring characters with just one or the other, and it's kind of like a handicap on you. Uh, but that's fun as well, uh, to kind of handicap yourself sometimes. Uh, I haven't made the max luck of this guy, and I don't think I will. Uh, but yeah, once in a while when his quest comes around, I do like to play it, just for fun. And then maybe the last one that I really want to talk about... Let's see if it shows up in here. Here we are. Uh, Avalon. Um, when I was, like... Within, when I was making the max look of Avalon, maybe like the last two-thirds, I had really kind of mastered the stage. And so it was fun to go through there and, you know, get my positioning right, uh, take down the guys in the right order, and then, you know, pinch everywhere with bounce characters. Uh, but since finishing the max look, I haven't played it. Um, yeah, so maybe it's not as fun for me as some of the other quests I just uh, mentioned, but uh, yeah, this was a good one, I felt like. Okay, next, let's talk about quests that I do not like. Um, and then uh, the first one, the first group I guess I'll talk about is the uh, the Kinki, the Sacred Grounds, and then the Golzetsu. Um, I touched on this lightly in another video, but they're too hard, and then they're too technical, and then you have to accomplish like three different things with every shot uh, in order to get anywhere. And um, yeah, it just doesn't fit, it doesn't fit my style of play. Um, maybe you picked up from like the, the previous quests that I did like to play, um, but having like a little leeway in like which characters you can choose and then um, like uh, techniques, uh, that's more fun for me, you know. And then also being able to take like uh, free uh, parties or like drop monster only uh, parties through, uh, that's another fun thing for me to do. And then, yeah, in the Kinky, in the Sacred Grounds, and in the Golzetsu Quest, it's almost impossible to pull that off, so not a big fan of those. Uh, let's see if there are any others. Ah, this was maybe the first quest that I hated in the history of Monster Strike, and this was Holdai. Um, I think some people like this quest, uh, but I don't like it, even now, even with a team of all, like, no block characters. Uh, the reason why I don't like it is because... Um, Pretty much every shot that you do is like decided. Uh, like the first two stages even, every single shot is decided. And if you miss any of those, uh, that can really screw up your run and maybe almost kind of guarantee your loss. Uh, that's not fun to me. <laughs> and then also you need to use uh, pretty much all uh, Pierce characters. I'm not the biggest fan of Pierce characters, so that's another knock against the, uh, the quest for me. Let's see what else. Ah, uh, El Dorado. I don't like or dislike this quest, but I know that there are some uh, very high level players that really do like it. Um, because in a way, it's kind of the purest uh, Monster Strike quest in the entire game. Uh, because there's pretty much no luck in there. Uh, for one thing, you want to use mostly uh, Pierce characters, so that kind of eliminates the luck of irregular bounds. Uh, for another thing, there are no weak points. Um, so, like, having a weak point in the right place can, you know, make a stage very easy for you if your positioning is right. No weak points in here, so you can't rely on that. Uh, what else? There's no hearts. There's only the healing walls. Um, so, like, the luck of hearts appearing or not appearing, that can't help you or screw you over. Um, 
So yeah, this quest, whether you can get through it or not, is entirely dependent on you and the shots that you take, so... I have a lot of respect for this quest, but I don't particularly enjoy playing it. <laughs> ah. Enmiten. I don't like this quest. I don't find it super difficult. Uh, you know, when I go through the, uh, the second watchtower every month, or almost every month, I, you know, get through this fairly quickly. Uh, but just the system of having to take down, like, all of the anti-pierce guys or all the anti-bounce guys in one turn. Um, and then having it not, uh, you know, do that counter effect where it creates that black hole and then moves you to, like, the next phase of that stage uh, is pretty messed up, I think. <laughs> There's been times where I have, like, taken down that, uh, that group of guys, like, three times, three turns in a row. And it's never gone off once, and it's just ridiculous. So, yeah, not not a good, well-designed quest at all, I would say. And then there was one more. Let's see. There he is, Kaduma. Um, this quest is also not too difficult. The thing is, is though, you have to be so careful, you know, to take down certain guys um, without taking down other guys. And then just because it takes so long to get through uh, one clear of the quest, uh, that, yeah, I don't really enjoy playing this one either. Uh, but yeah, I think those are all my least favorite quests. And then there are two uh, favorite quests, which I forgot to mention. And they're probably my two favorite overall in all of the history of Monster Strike. Uh, let's see if I can find them. Here it is. So it's light... Murasame, and then Dark Muramasa. Um, these quests were so much fun. It's a shame that they are locked behind the tickets. Um, it might be worth even me, uh, for me to go through the library uh, to play this quest and get the tickets, just so I can play those uh, quests at the end. Uh, but it's like all of the main four gimmicks uh, appear during the quest, and then all of the elements appear during the quest, so... No matter what party you're bringing, there's going to be a stage where you're at a disadvantage. And then you have to, like, uh, you know, work your way through it. Uh, try to get through it. And, uh, yeah, the characters you get, they're cool. Uh, they're not the strongest, but they're very, very well designed, I think. And, uh, yeah, I just love these quests. These are my two favorite quests in the entire game. Okay, so that was a look at my uh, most favorite and least favorite quests. And then uh, finally, I'll talk about my top five uh, memories or top five uh, accomplishments uh, in this game. And then the first one was going through the uh, Tower of Champions with a free party. And then um, I still have those old videos up um, as a playlist on my channel, um, just because I can't uh, bring myself to uh, delete it. Um, I've deleted a lot of the other stuff on my channel, but not that, um, just because I was so proud of that. Uh, and it was very difficult, but it was doable. And uh, yeah, I missed doing that in the uh, the recent game. And then uh, related to that is the uh, Striker's Rest. That was the global only tower uh, which appeared during Christmas. And that was also super duper fun. And then um, I really enjoyed going through that with Hatcher Monsters and Free-to-Play Monsters. And uh, yeah, every once in a while I'll go back and I'll watch those videos just so I can look at the quests again. Um, I'd love to play them again, but uh, with the characters we have now, they wouldn't be very challenging at all. <laughs> and then um, another uh, very good memory. I don't know if it's a good memory, but certainly something that I remember was making the max luck of the uh, light Murasame. Um, to do it solo, uh, well, I had a, a main and a sub account, but to do it solo was a big, big um, mountain to climb. Uh, but I did manage to do it, and uh, yeah, that was a very cool max luck to have. And of course, I enjoyed playing the, uh, the final mission, so uh, that was also very memorable. And then, another memory that I have, which was not good at all, but it explains my icon uh, that I use for my channel, and that is... Where is he? There he is. <laughs> Making the max log of Alexander. 
this is probably the worst event in all of the history of Monster Strike. Uh, it was a Dream Charl event, and then um, I think you got a few Charles from the chests at the end of the quest. Uh, but if you played uh, multiplayer, you got more Charles from damaged treasure chests. Um, so you couldn't just blaze through the quest, you had to play through it and then pay attention and then, you know, tap on the chests as they dropped uh, to pick up more Dream Charles. And then, even as you collected Dream Charles, um, Alexander had a very low chance of dropping from the Dream Hatcher. So, I played this super duper hard, like non-stop, for like a week straight. And then that was the entire length of the, uh, the time period of the uh, event, was one week, which was ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, but I think maybe a day before or two days before the deadline, I finally finished the max luck of Alexander. And um, I did end up using him a lot, so that was cool. Uh, but yeah, that was an awful event. And um, yeah, the hardest I've ever worked in this game. <laughs> and then that's why he's my icon uh, for this channel, Alexander. And then, I guess my other, my final biggest memory are... Uh, getting my first time clears of all of the uh, the first impossible monsters. I still remember them pretty well. Um, I think the first impossible that I ever beat uh, was uh, Tsukuyomi. Um, and then I remember playing way back in the early days of Global when you could just join random uh, multiplayer quests uh, just from people like around the world, uh, which was cool. Um, I joined a Tsukuyomi quest before I had completed it. And then one of the, uh, the players who had joined uh, was a hacker or a cheater or something. And so, like, every quest was, or every level of the quest was just clearing itself uh, without anybody having to do anything. And then uh, we were getting pretty close to the boss stage, and I was like, I don't like this, so I quit out. <laughs> and then um, some days later, I uh, beat it myself. Uh, I can't remember the team that I used now. Um... But in the end, when I finished the max look of uh, Tsukuyomi, I ended up using a like a 70 luck light Murasame instead of a max luck like Tiger X or something. Um, just because that extra damage from the uh, light Murasame, it kind of guaranteed a more uh, consistent clear, um, even though I was getting fewer drops uh, per run. Um, but yeah, that took some work. And then the second one I think I beat was maybe uh, Yamato Takedu. This was also pretty difficult. Um, I don't remember, again, my first time clear, but yeah, I already told the story of how I made the max luck, so that was pretty cool. Very strong character back in the day. And then next I think I beat uh, Izanami. Um, I think I beat him like three or four times before actually getting a drop of the character, so I really felt like I earned this one. <laughs> and I still remember like one of the times before I had gotten the drop, I was using Queen Butterfly as my uh, max luck, and then, um, you know, the characters of that time, their damage output was so low um, that a lot of the times I had to deal with the damage walls as they are coming out uh, during those last boss stages. And then I would get irregular bounds with uh, Queen Butterfly all the time and hit the damage walls and die, and that was very frustrating. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I eventually got the clear of this guy. And then I think I beat Izanagi. And then Izanagi was super difficult for me for some reason. Um, everybody was saying that he was like the easiest impossible uh, since forever, but I always had a lot of trouble with him. And then um, I actually never ended up making the max look of him in Global. Um, just because by the time I had strong enough characters to easily beat him, he just wasn't good anymore. So, yeah, I never made him global, still haven't made him in JP, although I might, just to, you know, kind of pad my numbers a bit. And then, the last impossible that I finally beat um, of all of the original five was Kushinada. Um, just that last stage, you know, the boss has so much HP, and then the characters of that time were so weak, and I never pulled a Gilgamesh or uh, like those high like Slayer uh, damage characters. Um, so yeah, it took me a while to finally get the clear of Kushinada. And then I think I finished the max look of Kushinada when I was on a vacation in Japan. Um, so that was um, 
that was memorable there as well. Uh, but yeah, that is a uh, look back at my uh, kind of my thoughts on the game, some memories of the game, and then some of my uh, bigger accomplishments as well. And uh, yeah, that will be the uh, the end of the Heisei era video. And then um, maybe in the next couple days, I'll do a uh, video looking ahead at the next era of uh, Reiwa. Um, I'll talk about like my favorite characters that I like to use now, and then uh, some thoughts about some of the recent updates that we've gotten, like a little bit more. Uh, detail into uh, my thoughts there. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.